Well, in a, in a year and a half's time, we, we, you know, we've got the company. We've become a public company. We have a running and driving prototype. Uh, we've, we've engineered out the hydrogen system on it uh, enough so that we can take that out of the car now and actually offer it to the public. And uh, we'll be selling that on a global basis. And then we're, we have several other technologies within the car that will be coming out sometime next year that are all energy efficient, you know, along air conditioning and stuff. And then we already have on the board, uh, drawing board, we're already working on a second car. This car was always designed to be um, the proof of concept. It's the beautiful part of the car. It's, it's, it's at the top of the food chain, and it gives us all the, the uh, attention, the marketing that we get. It, it attracts everybody, but that allows us to stay in business so that now we can take everything we learned from this car and we can actually build a car that's more in the twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 range. And it's easy to service. You can take this car any place in the world and get it serviced. We're using Acura electronics and a motor and drivetrain. I hadn't thought about that. That's good to know, too. So you don't have to have a special mechanic work on this car. You can take it into an Acura shop, a Honda shop, plug it right in the computer, and it'll mm -hmm. talk to you. On the ad, the first ad I saw, it said, how far can water go? How fast can water go? How fast can water go? Mm -hmm. And I remember that stopped me. Because I remember, what, what does that mean? And then I saw the DuPont registry and it had the picture of the scorpion there. And that stopped me. And then my only question was, because it said hydrogen, my only question was, where am I going to get hydrogen? Exactly. And I had to call up to find out, I don't have to go get hydrogen. We did that on purpose. That, and we, had a, we had a choice to make. Either we could build a fuel cell car with hydrogen or do this hydrogen, you know, what we call real-time hydrogen injection. Mm -hmm. And we decided to go with that because it was the most economical thing mm -hmm. to do. It would make the most immediate impact on the world because it's something we could do it now. We don't have to wait mm -hmm. five years for the infrastructure to be built mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the technology to catch up with. That's actually people. very smart. Well, what do you think of the, the Tesla and the electric cars that are coming out and then are out there? Well, you know, Tesla is kind of like our competitor maybe, but uh, we like Tesla. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we, we hope he makes it. It's good for the industry. Mm -hmm. um, well, let me... I'll tell you my view of Tesla. Yeah, let me hear yours Dude. first before I beat up on them. <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> I actually got excited a year and a half ago when I first heard about the Tesla, and I was one of the first people to call them up. I was on the same list with George Clooney and a bunch of other celebrities who wanted to have one of those cars. So I called them up because I saw the marketing value of me having one of the, uh, the only electric car in Texas, mm -hmm. a Tesla, which looked remarkable. And... Um, they basically talked me out of it. The, the Tesla that? people talked me out of they it. Talked you out of they it. talked me out of it by saying things like, well, you're in Texas, we will have no way to service your car. They said that we would have to spend, you would have to uh, pay an extra $8,000 for a service agreement, and every time the car needed work, we would have to send a technician to you, or you would have to send the car back to California. And they went on in such a way that it was like, they didn't really want my business. And I was ready. I was excited. I was going to pay in sure. full for one of the signature first cars. Mm -hmm. And now I'm at the point where I'm glad I didn't do it because, first of all, they've had delays in making their car. And then I think they had transmission problems with the very first one that came out. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, second of all, I started thinking, I thought batteries aren't actually all that environmentally friendly. Sooner or later, that battery goes in the environment. That's right. Sooner or later. And there's 7,000 batteries in the, uh, about 6,500, whatever, but there's a lot of batteries, laptop batteries, in that car. Any one of them, I already know how long batteries last in my laptop. There's 7,000 of them in the car. Right. I don't trust that. So I don't actually think the car is environmentally friendly. I don't think they still have some problems with it. And that's why when you came up with the, the Scorpion, and it needed hydrogen, but it was building making it right on board with me putting some water in the tank, I thought that was brilliant. It solved all the problems, and it's environmentally friendly. It is very, and you, you've addressed all the problems I was going to talk about Tesla because that is, once you get past the marketing in Tesla, then you see the real issues that they have. Yeah. And battery technology, I'm, I'm sure it's going to make it. I mean, mm -hmm. we're going to, I mean, the, the industry's working on it. It's just going to take a few years. They'll figure it out. I know they will. But between here and there, you know, you need something that you can use today. That's that, right. And that's where we came around. <clears throat> and we're not trying to run our motor 100% hydrogen. We just want to you produce enough hydrogen to enhance the, the, the burn in the motor and mm -hmm. uh, get all the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. that, that's, what we're, that's what we're really trying to do. Everything, the hydrogen is really a cool thing because hydrogen loves carbon. And so the carbon that's not burning your motor that's normally pushed out the tailpipe, the hydrogen attaches itself to the carbon 
inside the cylinder and it actually gets burnt up. So there's really nothing to come out the tailpipe. Interesting. A little bit of water vapor, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit, but not much. The energy part of it has really become possibly more important now than the car. The car is just a tool mm -hmm. to actually drive the green technology. That's what I understand. That's what I was starting to see that there was a strategy here. Part of it was, it's not really about the car. The car is an attention getter. And once you look at the car and go, what makes it run? Now you can tell them about the technology mm -hmm. and tell them that. Even though we haven't physically, you know, gone into production with it, the thing's already going to be pretty sold out all over the world. I mean, we're getting calls from every country in the world. Countries, not just companies anymore. We're getting <laughs> leaders of countries that are calling us because they want to get in on the thing early. Wow. Country of Chile, as an example, they called. They want to, they want to convert all, of, all the uh, government vehicles in the country of Chile. Azores, England. Has the U.S. government called yet? They haven't. <laughs> they might in they January. Would. They might. They might in January. I wish the car guys, the, you know, the big three, would call me and, and say, "Look, you know, Ron, you know, and then you'll like this because it's good marketing for them. If they would buy the, the, the our hydrogen system from us and install it on the cars and General Motors or something, it would save them because they could use that as a marketing tool yeah. and say, you know, we're making a step that's instantaneous and it'll change. You know, it's going to get you four or five miles to gallon. We have a clean burning thing." They could turn it into a marketing tool, and it could really save save them. Well, there's a you, you, you probably know about the story about the guy who went in and converted uh, like an American-made SUV into a part electric hybrid using parts off the shelf. Mm -hmm. Then he took it to the car show, and it got like 60 miles to the gallon without using gas. First, it goes to the battery first, and then it goes to gas. Mm -hmm. I think is correct. And he took it to the car show expecting the big guys to say yes we want to adapt that we can do that we see how you've done it and we want to buy it from you and they just said no if we can't design it ourselves we don't want it that's exactly that's exactly true i've been in chrysler they tested my air conditioning product in chrysler and they set me down in a meeting right there and they said how could it be that you invented this and we didn't and my answer was well i don't know i just happened to be the first guy to think of it could have been you but it happened to be me this time and they said well can't be that good because we didn't invent it, so we don't. We're not interested in oh, talking to you. Wow, that's exactly what that. they said. We got, and I'm sure y'all do too. I mean, we got kids, we got grandkids. We, you know, that uh, you know, not everybody makes a lot of money, and, and they need a car that gets better gas mileage. You uh -huh. know? And they and they still like the environment too, just because they can't afford a, a big high dollar hybrid. They still like the environment, and they want to do their part. Right. Yeah. One of the reasons we went public was for that reason, because we think there's a, gra a grassroots grassroots movement for people out there that are that want to help and want to participate mm -hmm. and that would be willing to you know to, to invest with a company even a hundred bucks I mean it makes mm -hmm. a lot of you know I love what you're doing I love the dream I love the company I love that it's a Texas company and I love the car so I'm very much glad to be I'm a stockbroker or a stockholder now uh, an investor in the company uh, I bought one of the first cars if not the first car I want a special edition limited edition car just for me mm -hmm. that says hybrid on the back or hydrogen on the back so I'm excited. 